Alright, um, hi, it's Jake, and I am doing a lecture on space-time, because a lot of you are interested on this Charlie Chaplin film that is currently out. Okay, so, last time I had a wormhole, and I briefly dis explained what it was, and now I'm probably going to go into it with a little more detail. Okay, so, this is, like... Just a more detailed picture on how you could go through the space-time, like, you go into a black hole's event horizon. If you get lucky, you can come out. Next. Um, let's see. Now, a wormhole is composed, is composed of space-time itself. See, like, here would be our space-time. At least two black holes. And if you wanted to, you could probably add in a couple more. But... That's kind of complicated. Anyway, so then I got these black holes. And then there's also a thing called a white hole, which is, al which is also probably in there. That is like the exact opposite of a black hole. Black hole sucks everything in. White hole pushes everything out. And it's that white hole that allows you to go through. Otherwise, you'd hit the singularity, boom, you're dead. Um, let's see. Next, for our wormhole, we will have... There are also, like, multiple dimensions that the space-time can bend in, like, like, it's here, and then it could be there, and here. I'm just going to draw a graph. Does that look like anything, or do I need to change that? Hang on a sec. Um, let's see. Now, that does look like, I think that looks like something, but, okay. So, next, like, I could have a wormhole, I mean, like, a black hole right there. Make an intersection there. And then it could just intersect in a different dimension with something else. So, like, these things carry on to different dimensions, practically. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that. Okay, so, this is saying that the universe may not be flat. Most people say it is. I don't. Okay, so, if you've read A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking, somewhere in there, is it in the seventh chapter? It's somewhere in the book that um, he says that space has no curvature, barely any curvature. It's like, cool, one. However, that's because we're in it. Let's say we're not in it. Like, let's say we're that guy right there. Then it all of a sudden looks different. Like, let's say you're on this plane that looks like a curved U or something. And then we go above the U. And suddenly the U would look different than if we were on the U. If we were on the U, everything would look mostly flat. But if we were above the U, it would look sort of curved. So that's what I have by there. And then... Let's say I went this way, away from the curve, and, it, and then you'd see the whole U. So this is one reason why we may see space-time as if it's flat, but it's not, and then this would allow you to go through and make a wormhole, and then turn to Charlie Chaplin in 1928. Alright, so that's a little bit of space-time stuff. Let's see what else is there. Um... When a body's in space-time, it always makes a little dimple in it, like you're on a trampoline. So, like, it's like, you're on, like, a trampoline, you put in a bowling ball, it's gonna make, like, a little dimple in there. And then, like, so, and then through these dimples, Einstein describes this as gravity. And so, like, let's say here's where the sun is. And since it's more massive, it has more of a dimple. And then let's say here's where Earth is. Like a naked dimple, which is smaller. And then here's the moon, which has a really small one, so I'm just barely going to draw it. You know, because of this, hang on a moment, i got to draw a circle up here. Alright, does 
All right, I believe that looks, yeah, that looks like something that's going up like that. And then, so because of this, the Earth goes in a circle around the sun based off how this curve is. And that's one of the major points of what Einstein had um, published in his theory of general relativity in 1915. Let's see. Also, at a really small level, this is mentioned a little bit in string theory, um, space-time is like constantly being like bumped up and down by different particles, like Like, all the different particles are making these little itty-bitty, make space-time go. Sort of like, um, it's sort of like, uh, what's it like, um, it's like a, um, I'm just gonna come up with this, like, maybe a kid bouncing on a tra on a trampoline, like, the trampoline goes up and down and up and down and up and down as he's bouncing, and then, if I'm guessing that's an analogy that would be like, but then eventually you can't really see this because these particles are really itty-bitty. And so, like, here you're not seeing bumping up and down and up and down and up and down. Simply because the particles are small. It's, like, it's really small. Okay. So that is practically how space-time acts at a quantum level, I believe. Um, let's see. So I think that's everything I know about space-time. Uh, thanks for watching. Do you have any opinions you want to state while we're opinions? doing this lecture? Um, like what? Just any any of your own opinions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Think that space time is not flat, as I've said before. I prefer it to be curved. All right. Um, thanks for watching.